So here we're going to see how we can use the ideal gas law and effectively manipulate it to give us the molar mass of a gas sample to identify between two different unknown gases based on the molar mass. We've got a 1.27 gram sample of an oxide of nitrogen. We're told it's either nitric oxide or uh, dinitrogen oxide. Those are going to have different molar masses because of their formula. We're not going to worry about what those are just yet. And that gas occupies a volume of 1.07 liters at 25 degrees Celsius and 737 millimeters of mercury. So which oxide is that? Well, let's take that mass of sample and not worry about it right now. We've seen in the previous video, we could figure out how to calculate the molar mass, come up with a whole formula for doing it. I'm actually going to solve it a slightly different way here, which is just walking through the steps independently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore that 1.27 gram sample, and what I'm going to focus on is that I know I have a gas with a volume, a temperature, and a pressure. That's three of my four state variables, leaving that last one for me, amount, number of moles, which is part of the molar mass. So why don't we do that? If PV equals NRT, then N equals PV over RT. All good. Now, uh, we've got a temperature here. That's great. But, of course, that needs to be in Kelvin, 25 degrees Celsius. If you do enough problems, you know that's one, uh, 298.15 Kelvin. Um, obviously, do the conversion if you need to. That 737 millimeters of mercury is going to cause us a few problems, uh, in terms, possibly in terms of the uh, gas constant R. So let's think about that. Well, I've got a pressure of 737 millimeters of mercury, but I also know that one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. So I can actually express this through my conversion factor in atmospheres, and that's going to then decide which value of R I'm going to use. Again, I have to make sure I use a value of R that has units consistent with the pressure units that I'm looking for. So here I am, 737 divided by 760. We're going to find that this is 0 0.6, oh, let's call it 0 0.9, uh, 70 atmospheres. A little less than atmospheric pressure. So now we have a pressure. We have a temperature in Kelvin that we need it. And we also see that we have a volume. So that gives us the 1.07 liters here. And now we can just start plugging things in. Our pressure of 0.970 atmospheres times our volume of 1.07 liters. Now we're going to divide that gas constant. In this case, we're going to use 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere per Kelvin per mole. And that's just one that I've got on the top of my head. Again, choose a value of R and units that work for you in terms of what you can find. And finally, we've got that temperature of 298 Kelvin. While we're at it, why don't we look at a little bit of intuition that could come out of this. 0 0.970 atmospheres isn't one bar, but it's pretty close, because it's close to one atmosphere, and one atmosphere is close to one bar. Uh, 298 Kelvin. Well, that's the temperature we often associate with um, not standard temperature and pressure, but it's a, a temperature that we see a lot. And I think we would have seen earlier that one mole of an ideal gas at one bar of pressure would have a volume of about 24 liters at 25 degrees Celsius. But we don't have 24 liters, we have one. In other words, we might have 1 24th of a mole. So it shouldn't surprise me if my answer is going to be close to, let's say, 0 0.05 moles. Let me do the calculation. I've got my uh, pressure in here times 1.07 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 298. And there I get 0 0.0424 moles. And that's great. That seems to match my intuition. 
Well, now we can calculate a molar mass. Molar mass is just a mass over moles. Well, we saw there was a mass associated with that. It's 1.27 grams. And we divide that by the 0 0.0424 moles, and all of a sudden, our unknown gas has to have a molar mass of, and here I'm getting 30.0 grams per mole. We've solved for the molar mass of this gas, but we've been asked to make a comparison. Is it NO or is it N2O? Well, I don't need to make any big molar mass calculation from the periodic table of this. Nitrogen is about 14, oxygen is about 16 grams per mole. That's 30 grams per mole. Here, we're going to be 44 grams per mole because we've got an extra nitrogen in there. So it appears that our unknown gas is nitric oxide. 